Okay, principles of engineering kids. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to show you a little bit on the breadboard how to create a series and a parallel circuit. Um, you're going to see a couple of uh, diagrams that are going to be important to us later. Anytime you see a straight line that goes across, this indicates just a wire, and you can bend it at 90 degrees, or you can bend it in uh, curves as well, too. A long line followed by a short line is given as a power supply, and a power supply always has a positive side and a negative side. The long side is the positive side, and the short side is the negative side. So for this power supply over here, the positive side is going to be the long side, and the negative side is the short side. Um, let's see here. And on this breadboard circuit, it's important to note that there is a uh, vertical line that goes straight down like this, and there's another vertical line that goes straight down like this. Um, all of the lines, all of the sockets inside the breadboard here are connected to each other underneath by a metal wire. So if you were to try to hook something up in any of these slots, they were all going to be connected to each other. Same thing on the negative terminal. There is a big long line down here and every slot down on the bottom is going to be connected by a uh, strip of metal underneath the breadboard. So um, whenever we're dealing with circuits, there are three variables that we're going to have to really be worrying about. It is the, the voltage, the current, and the resistance. The voltage is given as the letter V. Uh, the current is given by the letter I, and the resistance is given by the letter R. The voltage is measured in volts, the current is measured in amps, and the resistance is measured in ohms. I, in engineering, we're mainly going to be focusing on the voltage and the current. Um, the resistors are going to be things that do things. So we're talking about motors, we're talking about um, lights, any of those would be considerations of resistors. Uh, and we'll go into a little bit more detail about that as we continue going on. But this is just kind of a basic idea because we're playing around with the motors. So I'm going to show you guys how to set up a motor in a series circuit, and I'm going to show you how to set up a motor in a parallel circuit. To make a wiring diagram of a series circuit, remember for series there's nowhere else for the electrons to go inside of a circuit, so you're going to have your power supply hooked up. That's either going to be by a battery or a power supply, some kind of power source. And the uh, current is going to flow from the positive end of the terminal all the way around to the negative end of the terminal. So in this case, uh, I have three resistors hooked up, and I was trying to show that uh, if you have 10 volts in, by the time you make it all the way through, those 10 volts are going to have to be used up. So in this case, all 3.3 volts goes to each resistor equivalently. Um, I am assuming that all of these are going to be exactly the same in terms of the resistance value. So like if this was motors, it would be three motors right here. If it was light bulbs, there would be three light bulbs right there. Um, we're going to use LEDs a lot, so 3.3 volts is a little spicy for some LEDs, um, but it should, I mean, uh, hopefully we're going to turn the voltage down whenever we do stuff like this. Uh, it's also important to note that the current is always the same throughout the entire series circuit. So the current stays the same, and the voltage ends up getting split. Okay, So if you have 10 volts going here, the three objects are going to split the voltage evenly. Likewise, with a parallel circuit, you're still going to get electricity going from positive to negative, uh, but there are multiple branches involved. And when you add multiple branches to a circuit, what ends up happening is the voltage in each branch stays exactly the same, but the current is going to end up getting multiplied uh, by the number of branches that you add. So if you have two branches, you're going to end up having twice as much current as you would have normally had. If you have three branches, you're going to end up with three times as much current. This is assuming that all of your elements inside the branches are going to be the same and pull the same, uh, they have the same voltage, so if they have the same resistance value, then they're all going to pull the same current. Uh, if you have different uh, mechanisms on there, the current's not going to multiply by an even number, but it is going to increase. So you have to be careful whenever you're setting up parallel circuits, because the more you put in there, the more current you get going through the circuit itself. 
and the branches aren't really going to be that big of a problem. The problem is whenever you have all this current going through this single branch right here, and whenever all of the branches come back together, and you have all the current going through this branch right here. For most large wires, it's not that really big of a deal, um, but for the small wires that we're using in class, it is very easy for those wires to get hot, especially if you're dealing with parallel circuits. So have a little bit of caution with that. Now to use a uh, breadboard in order to be able to create a circuit using simple wires, uh, what I like to use is I like to use the positive and the negative terminal. So uh, from my power supply, I'm going to have a wire going to the positive terminal, and then I'm going to use a wire to connect it to the first row. And from there, I'm going to set up my jumper for the motor, and the motor jumper is going to look like this. It's going to have two wires sticking out from the bottom. I'm going to put my jumper between both of these and stick them in. And then on the other side, I'm going to take a wire and I'm going to connect it to the negative. And then from the negative, we can go back to the power supply. So there should be one more wire right here that goes back to the power supply. I'm going to draw that. There's a wire. And I'm going to make it go back to the power supply. So this would be the negative, and then this would be the positive. I think I need to reverse where those wires are going here. Let's say uh, this guy's going to the positive, and this guy's going to the negative. Whoopsie, there we go. Okay, and if I wanted to draw a, or if I wanted to make a parallel circuit, let's say that I had three motors hooked up to it. So instead of putting one jumper on there, I put three jumpers on there. Well, what's gonna end up happening is I, I do the same layout. So I have a wire that goes to the positive end and I connect it to one of the rows. And it doesn't matter which row you use, but every single row is connected by a thin metal wire underneath. So they're all connected. So if I put three jumpers that go between the two horizontal uh, horizontal bars, then that's going to create three branches. The first branch will be here, the second branch will be here, and the third branch will be here. And then all three of those branches will go back and then into the negative. And then from there, I can have a negative wire go to the power supply. So what this will do is this will create a parallel circuit that goes between um, three motors and it will line them up. This will generate a lot of current so you have to be careful. The voltage will remain the same um, but the current is going to definitely be increased by having three motors there. So if you plug it up and get all 7.2 volts or whatever voltage you have for the motor going, uh, these things could get pretty hot. So be careful if you're doing parallel circuits this way. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Um, we're going to be playing around with motors and trying to create series and parallel circuits uh, with motors and LED lights. So that's going to be our next focus for the next couple of days. I hope you all have fun. I'll see you later.